Okay, we're recording. Um, cool. So, hey, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Um, I'm Maddie. I'm uh, the producing director at Culture Hub in New York. Um, and welcome to the Culture Hub residency Q&A. Um, maybe we'll just introduce from the Culture Hub folks um, before we get into the thick of it. Maybe I'll hand it over to the uh, West Coast. Hi, I'm Camille. I'm the creative technologist of Culture Hub LA. Hey, y'all. I'm Deandra. I'm the technical director at the New York studio of Culture Hub. Yeah, so that's us. Um, so I think what I will do is just give a little rundown of, of the residency program. It's probably stuff that you've already seen online. Um, and then we'll go into a Q, open Q&A. And if you have questions that you that come up while I'm talking or while Camille or Deandra's talking, you can type them in the chat and we'll probably answer them afterwards. Um, or we can do the little raise, and then we will do the little raise hand function after, after we kind of do the overview for um, people asking questions. Um, Camille or Deandra, would you do the admitting people from the weight room? Cool, thanks. All right, so the Culture Hub Residency Program has has been around for um, for quite some time. And um, this year, what we're offering are one week residencies. Um, these one week residencies are uh, really designed to get artists into our physical studios, um, supported by our teams in New York or LA, um, and, and to get work up on its feet in front of an audience in some way. Um, whether that is through an in-progress showing, through a workshop, um, through a, a talk, a curated event. Um, I think we sort of made this shift to uh, one-week residencies concentrated September to December last year, um, kind of as a reaction to the pandemic, um, because we had been working with residents over a, a year, um, but without doing that fully remotely. Um, we're, we're just trying to get folks to be supported by the resources that we have um, that are time and space and humans who can collaborate with you um, in person. Um, so the program will offer one week residencies between September 11th and December 15th in 2023. Um, artists will receive one week of studio access with full technical support um, as much as we can offer at either Culture Hub New York or Los Angeles. Um, and the goal should really be to target a specific area of development in, the, in, in their project um, and to engage the Culture Hub community around their work in, in whatever way is most interesting. Um, we are looking for projects that have a clear vision for how they're going to use our physical space and resources. Um, and a clear vision for how they want to engage the Culture Hub community. Um, we're open to doing that both online and or in person. Um, but again, it just has to engage our physical studios in some way. Um, we, our studios are flexible spaces um, equipped with reconfigurable lighting, audio, video, and projection systems. We also have access to a variety of hardware and software. Um, it's uh, one of the requirements is that each artist will present one public offering to the culture of community. Um, and artists will receive a $1,500 stipend, which can be used um, in any way to the development of your project as you see fit, whether that's paying yourself, paying collaborators, um, making purchases related to your project. Um, but that 1500 is, um, that's the extent of money that we have to go towards each, each project. Um, we also support each project through marketing. Um, through, we really try to put forward both the artists themselves and their project. Um, we feature the artists with a page on our website um, and they're profiled on our social media and in our e-blasts. And then um, if it's appropriate, we will also um, 
you know, we do that for the event, whatever the event, event is. And if the project, um, if it makes sense, we also make a project page um, that lives on our, on our website. Um, we also uh, take photo and video documentation of, of each of the artist projects very seriously, because we know that um, that can really help in getting the project to the next phase of support, um, which means that we also understand that this residency is just one stop along the way for a project. It's probably not going to be um, everything because it's it's one week in a in a sub in a smallish studio, um, and we also you know this the culture hub network of past resident artists and associated artists and the global community is also something that each resident you know becomes a part of um and and we can do um a good bit of of matchmaking you know if there are specific areas of or questions um that you are are looking to um to progress with um we have our application available online. It's a Google form. It's one page. It's designed to not be um, that uh, that lengthy, which is both a kindness to you and a kindness to us because we have to read them. Um, and uh, if you have any questions about the Google form, you know, you can let me know. And it will close on March 15th at midnight um, Pacific time. Um, the, the form won't actually close at that time, but we won't look at any um, applications that are time stamped after midnight Pacific time. Um, yeah, and we are looking for projects that um, critically engage technology um, and, under, and are are, are asking a, a question that's like both imaginative for the possibilities for how technology can enhance our ability to connect as humans and our ability to understand our, our shared humanity. Um, and, you know, we really don't, it, we have, we have, a, we have certain things that we're better at supporting given the skills of our team and the, the way that our studios are set up, but we're really open to artists from a lot of different um, backgrounds, mediums, and creative perspectives. Um, and maybe the one other sort of caveat thing to say is that this, um, the program's funded, uh, we have some, you know, national funding for it. And so this is, um, only open to U.S.-based artists, this, this particular residency open call. And uh, we want to support artists who don't have the support of a university, um, so you're not enrolled in a in a degree earning program. You're not a student um, in a degree earning program. And I feel like that's the little talk overview that I am giving. Um, should we go for questions or Deandra and Camille, do you wanna talk, give a little overview of, of technical things at the studios? I can give a quick spiel um, oh. about the New York City um, space. Um, so we're in a small-ish, like Maddie said, um, black box studio. Um, we have a 30-foot projection wall that uh, we tend to project on, um, along with some projectors. We have three Panasonics, which are our main projectors, but we also have one laser projector and a couple of smaller projectors that we oh. utilize around. Um, we have a grid that we can hang off of, um, which we have LEDs on about 16 of them. So we have a whole lighting system that can be mapped to a board, a small dimmer board or a Q lab. Um, we have three FS5 cameras along with PX70, so five cameras in total, along with abundance of tripods, and then a couple of smaller webcam that we use for different things. Um, we have a ton of audio equipment, MIDI controllers, um, a whole bunch of stuff that you can utilize along with computers, um, small Mac minis that we could use. Um, sorry, I'm looking around because there's so much stuff. Um, we have these cabinets, which you guys can't see, but they also can be utilized as projection surfaces as well as mount TVs on them or mount um, pieces on them. People have mounted um, art stuff on it as well. Um, Am I missing anything, Maddie? That's not coming to my brain right now. 
ton of cables, ton of cables. Um, and I think that's the main, main things, as well as a booth that has kind of our main, as our main hub with heavy duty window computer, a Mac computer, um, a soundboard, a huge soundboard. We have two, one Yamaha and um, we're forgetting the other one that's in there now. Um, and speakers. So we have two huge speakers and a sub, as well as eight QSC speakers and another sub that goes along with it, um, which we tend to switch between depending on what is needed in our space at the time. Um, and we can either hang those on the grid or hang them on, or not hang them, but leave them on the floor or kind of move them around however we want to. And a lot of these things can be moved around. So they're not stationed to one space. They can be pointed to kind of any direction that we need them to. Um, and yeah. And um, a lot of this gear um, is online. We have equipment lists for both LA and New York, I think on the residency page. So just in case anybody like forgets so you don't need to write everything down. <laughs> uh, the gear between the LA studio and the New York studio is fairly standardized. We don't have quite as much. Our studio isn't as big. It's about 630 square feet. It is located in the Reef in downtown Los Angeles. Um, you know, we also have a rig that's perfect for hanging whatever you want <laughs> off of the like, um, like projectors, and, like various fabrics and, you know, all sorts of other things. Um, it's also perfect for projections, black box kind of environment, no windows, which makes it a lot easier. Um, we have a bunch of like audio and video equipment. Also a lot of cables and adapters <laughs> fit needs. So, and you know, we also have the ability to like rent out some facilities um, if needed on our floor, such as like, if you need like a bigger green screen room, such and such. So this becomes like a question of like, you know, kind of identifying your needs. And then we can see like, you know, what, <laughs> what we can do. Yeah, I think something that's been successful this year um, in the program is um, just being able to have really practical conversations with artists about their, their needs um, prior to the residency um, so that we can, you know, under, uh, just, you know, get in there and really be able to work together um, to, to target specific areas of the project's development. Um, and figure out how we can best leverage our resources. Um, maybe one other thing that I'll share is just about the application process or the review process. Um, so it's we, we review all of the um, applications by a team internally. Um, we then hand them over to a group of external reviewers, um, which is like comprised of past resident artists, folks who have never been involved in the residency program, but are, are um, in the field um, and then uh, those folks bring bring it down to a, um, we sort of get everybody's feedback and bring it down to a smaller group um, and have, uh, have then the opportunity to interview some artists um, about the, their project. Um, so I see a bit of, um, uh, I have one question in the chat and I feel like other folks, um, if you want to raise a hand or put a question in the chat, I think now might be the time for that. Um, so could a solo show that aspires to be a film and explore new formats be eligible? Yes, it could. Um, I think understanding, uh, for us to understand what new what sorts of nor new formats um, would be great and sort of what, what is the technical um, experiment going on. Um, how's the floor for dance? It's okay. It's not great. I mean, it, like, it's not, um, it's not a sprung floor. It's not, uh, but we've had dance, um, performances happen in our studio. Um, wondering what the audience capacity in the NYC studio is. I think pre-pandemic we were getting, like, we could really get, 60 folks in here. I think now we're a little bit more comfortable with um, like 30 to 40 max, um, but it really depends on audience configuration. Um, and, 
yeah, just how you're configuring the space and how audience our audience sitting um, in chairs or or are they standing, et cetera. To go um, back to the floor, it's masonite um, that's painted black. Um, because we move around so much, it does get dirty, but uh, we mop it and we clean it and paint it. But um, it is masonite, just to put that out there. Alex. Yeah, thank you all for this. Um, one question just about um, what you brought up, um, uh, Maddie, uh, about kind of zeroing in on a particular aspect of the project and how um, we want to um, use the space during the residency. I was wondering if you could speak a little bit more to that in terms of the application and the, and the review process. Um, do you want to hear about, you know, the big vision? Uh, do you, you know, how, how much do you want to hear about the big vision? How much do you want to hear about the little thing that we imagine we could actually accomplish in a week? Um, and yeah, just getting any more context around that would be really helpful. Yeah, I mean, I think I think kind of equal parts is really helpful. Um, I think understanding the the broader goal and then how this residency would fit into that that bigger picture goal um but we want to know how you're going to use the week at culture hub because we want to know if we feel like that's um something that that the that we can actually support effectively because a lot of the application reading is is finding the right match um like the project so many projects are are really spectacular but we're like you know but we're not really a maker space so we don't have the ability to support that aspect of the project um, and and feeling like if the sort of progress could happen within a week that you're envisioning. Um, so, I, you know, I would maybe say um, go half and half with the with the character um, with the character count uh, to to make sure that we're understanding like the the heart and soul of it and also um, you know, and I think folks have have gone like a day by day breakdown um, of how they hope to use the space. Um, but it could also be more of like describing the issue, the the sort of the sort of area of project development you're going to focus on and how you're going to focus on it. it. Doesn't necessarily have to be a a day by day breakdown. Does that answer? Is that good enough? It's uh, it's very helpful. Thank you. Um... I think maybe you just connected to that. So if there's an element of maybe the final project that uh, includes some technical elements that maybe wouldn't be a good fit, you still want to hear about them, um, even if um, maybe the the kind of week long version that would be in residence uh, wouldn't wouldn't incorporate those elements. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, um, I see a question in the chat from Judy alongside a V work. Can I work with other medium in the studio as well, such as plaster or wood? We are, you know, this just gets into the, you know, we don't, it gets into a question of sort of like um, ability to, to support um, like specifically plaster. I mean, I, I think it could be okay, but I think it's really just about like, understanding what you would need to be doing with it like if you're bringing in pieces that are already made and then just need to be installed that's super welcome if you're hoping to like get a bunch of you know the, the studio does get get used by um you know a lot of different people so i think it's just about uh understanding how how much of a how, how engaged this work is like with our actual physical space um, Deandra, is there something that you want to add to that? No, I think that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, we utilize the space to do things, but a lot of people do move through it. So yeah, it is about understanding kind of what exactly you need it for. So just to um, follow up on that, during the one week that the residency happens, there will be other activities in the studio as well? No, not necessarily, but like, you know, our somebody needs to go in and grab some equipment um and the, right, okay. the equipment just needs to be you know not covered in dust or something like that you know mm -hmm. um and like the bathroom is in there so folks need to be able to walk through the space and you know mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just thinking of like oh it's you know we don't really want like a dust filled room if you're planning on like right saw you know cutting a bunch of plastic. yeah yeah Okay, okay, got it. I guess, is it like it's not a totally isolated space, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Yeah. 
Okay. Thank you. Um, um, and then Rory, Rory has his hand up. <laughs> Hi, thanks. Um, if we are based in neither city, are there other factors beyond our own housing and travel um, we should be thinking about in terms of what, like, if, if one or the other is a is um, do they work the same way as the selection process the same? Do we make any sort of suggestion, um, or is that decided? You have totally to select a location okay. that you're applying to. Yeah, and so is there is there any factor that um, any difference between the two that would inform that outside of travel and housing needs that we might have? Um. I think the LA studio is like, you know, just a little bit smaller. Um, so depending on what sort of public engagement and what the work is is looking to accomplish. Um, and then I think, yeah, I think it's really just about, like you, you know, practically living and working in that city for for a week, what would um, what would be most most easy for for you and, and any collaborators and would either location have a have benefits um, to the project itself. Cool. Um, can a US based artist apply for a residency with a project that involves someone in their team that is not based in the US? Yes. I don't think I need to expand on that. Any other questions? Anybody want further clarification about things? Even if you've already asked a question? Is there an email address um, I can email if there are questions later on? Yeah, residency at culturehub.org um, is, is the email to email. Um, okay. And uh, yeah. Okay, thank you. Cool. Uh, Kate? Yeah, um, thanks for holding this. Um, I have a question about um, um, I guess what we can bring. Um, so I know that there is a suggestion of how we should be using the space based on what's in there, the hardware and software that's available in the space. And I was able to find the equipment list, which had been evading me. Uh, I feel a little dumb about that, but um, but yeah, can we bring our own systems, sensors, um, bits of technology in the space and what kind of, like, are there restrictions we should be aware of in terms of what we can actually bring into, into a space? If I'm thinking in particular for LA with like because it's a reef, it's a public space. It's um with the I mean just just don't set off the fire alarms, right? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, um, like for like what you want to bring, like feel free to you know bring what you need, like to for your project. Like one of our resident artists, like brought in like whole like pc setup all these sensors <laughs> mics and everything so okay. you know if yeah. you have stuff that would work for your needs yeah cool. super super welcome to bring in any any systems that work for you i think in terms of interfacing the culture hub systems it, it would likely be a conversation to make sure things aren't redundant or like if if something wants to trigger a light cue making sure we know how 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 that needs to interface the culture hub systems, but I think that would be all of a, all of a, you know, all part of a conversation. Um, yeah. All right. Cool. Thanks. That helps clarify. Cool. How is Wi Fi connectivity if we bring technology that relies on it? Um, it's, it's our, it's what we, you know, it's our, the bane of our existence because in New York, at least. <laughs> Deandra, go. This is your. It works. It does what it needs to do. I mean, we use it to live stream. Um, we rely uh, on it heavily. <laughs> we rely on it heavily, and it does what it needs to do. Um, 
our uh, we have a twenty like a twenty upload and a, a five hundred download if that helps in any way. But yeah, we heavily rely on it, and it does it does work well when it works well. Camille has the Wi-Fi in at Culture Hub LA. It's fine. Use it for live streaming, <laughs> you know, for anything. <laughs> Can't really get around not having good Wi-Fi these days. Yeah, we uh, yeah we are very often work using telepresence systems, using Wi-Fi to control systems remotely between two things in one room. Um, so it's something we're also very well versed in uh, troubleshooting. Um, Alexa. Hi, y'all. Um, forgive me if this was already asked, um, but I was wondering if you could talk a little bit more about the way in which you're looking at the applications and how they're writing about like the public engagement portion and like what that could potentially look like. Um, is there a particular way you're expect or like desiring um, residents to be engaging with your community, with the culture hub community and the public in that sense. Um, and sort of how it's weighted with the development of that week. I think the goal is that whatever the engagement with the culture hub community is gonna push the project forward in some way. Um, so that means that an interaction with an audience is kind of integral to the piece and the project figuring out something about itself. Mm -hmm. um, that's a weird way to put it, the project figuring out something about itself, maybe you figuring out something about the project. Mm -hmm. um, I do think that like we are also open to you know bringing in a conversation or, or sort of saying, you know what, I don't think there are enough artists there isn't, there isn't a, you know, there aren't artists talking about this sort of area that my project engages with. And I would really like to bring in a few artists to have a conversation. And that would really push my thinking forward and would engage, you know, a new group of folks into the Culture Hub community. Um, I also think that workshops, um, like that sort of idea um, is, is really practical because that engages folks in a in a much different way on a pro on a project so it you know it could be about bringing a new community into culture hub it could be about saying i have this new um, kind of practice or workflow and i want to share that with others or it could be i really need to understand how this interaction is gonna is gonna affect an audience and how an audience is gonna um, receive it and i want to have a conversation with them afterwards um, I think we, you know, it's 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 an important evaluate like it's an important aspect of the residency for us. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I think it, it if that piece is like woefully underdeveloped in a in a residency application, then um, that that would matter. Um, but we're open to a lot of different uses of that engagement. It doesn't have to be one thing. It doesn't have to be an in progress showing um, in front of an audience if that's not if that's not what's going to be most useful to the piece or to you. Um, Great, and it and it could be like an in progress showing. That's totally fine too. Yeah, totally. That's I think that's kind of most common. Um, I think a few artists have done in addition to an in-progress showing or, or a sort of final showing have also um, done, a, done a workshop or two. Um, I don't think that this year anybody did like a curated event um, because I think, yeah, I don't think anybody did. So most of the times it's, it's sharing the work that was, that's like been in the studio and been getting worked on for the past week in some way. Okay, cool. Thank you. I think there was a question in the chat about hardware and software. Mm -hmm. um, 
So yeah, we have an abundance of hardware as well as software. Um, Sungmin, our creative technologist, is well versed in a lot of softwares, um, both some that we have licenses to, like QLab and VDMX, but also anything that um, lives online. He basically learns. Um, is there a specific software or hardware or something that you want us to expand on, Audrey? We have um, we have green screen paper in uh, in <coughs> that we use. Yeah, we have green screen paper, and um, we can use the LED light slider, or we also have three um, Fresnels that we utilize um, to light them sometimes that are more like film lighting, photography lighting, um, as well as like two really small movers. Uh, so we have green screen paper, and then we also have like this huge green screen like makeshift screen that turns into a screen. Um, I'm trying to think of other softwares. We have a lot of softwares. We have Resolum, uh, QLab, um, VDMX, um, Ableton. Um, yeah, we have a lot of different softwares that, that we work with. Um, question in the chat, can I submit more than one potential project under the same name? This is a good question. Uh, please no. We would like to just review one project from each artist. Um, and if we have multiple submissions um, from the same lead artist, we'll only review one. Um, I'm, so that's a good question. Thanks for asking it. And we'll review the one that's first submitted. Blender, do we work with Blender? I do. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of work with wonder. <laughs> um, hi, Sherry. Hi. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can. Okay. So if she works with it in LA, is there a way to communicate during the residency with Camille about Blender? Yeah, I think there is. Deandra, does do do us New Yorkers have Blender? Blender? Let's see. Yeah, we have Blender and um, Unreal. Oh, you do. Which okay. are very very similar. Yeah, but we we okay. work with both. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah. Um, cool. I'm gonna just answer this question in the chat, and then Kate, what hours during the residency week do we have access to the space? Um, in New York, the building itself is open between 10 a.m. and 10 p.m. Um, the Culture Hub team generally works between 10 and 6, um, but we time shift those hours when we have an event. Um, I think we kind of work together to, to make sure that the artist needs are met, and if you want to work until 10, we can give you keys so that you can lock up after yourself. Um, so it's, it's generally 10 to six supported with some, some, um, some team here, 10 30 to six. Um, and then without the culture of team until 10 at night. What about LA? Um, LA can be, uh, dependent. <laughs> it, that's the way it's kind of worked out the building does close it, it doesn't always close at a consistent time but you can imagine it to be sometime around like maybe 8 p.m or so and at that point you need a key fob to get into the main building so just keep that in mind if you're working late night hours and i don't know maybe you want to get something to eat or drink <laughs> <laughs> you know the you, you would need a key fob and um, yeah yeah, and in terms of our team, you know, we're we're we will work like a sort of a normal work week amount for for people who work a job, um, and we'll sort of time shift our days to to meet the needs of whatever public presentation, um, but are generally going to hold those normal working hours um, during the week. Hey. Yes, um, I'm wondering if you could speak a little bit more to the. Um, 
the criteria around engaging technology with the work um, and how you how you evaluate critical engagements with technology. And um, I think I wrote down that you said how it enhances connections or like helps us understand our shared humanity. So I'm, I'm wondering if you could speak a little bit more to like the, I guess the kinds of projects you're excited to support. Um, there seems to be like, um, I just want to make sure I'm not reading into that, like an assumption around like a tone of a project being something that is maybe more positive. Um, and yeah, because I don't see my project as a particularly positive one. So totally wanna... doesn't need okay. to be positive. I think I, I, I said that part because I was also said a, a critical relationship to technology. Mm -hmm. I think, um, you know, the projects there's nothing wrong with projects that are, you know, saying they want to add projections to something, um, but we're looking for pieces that are and, and artists that are are sort of a little bit pushing pushing a boundary of some of some kind in relationship to um, in relationship to and with their their the relationship to technology, um, so you know, we are an, an experimental arts organization. So ideally there's some experiment going on and it has some, some sort of um, question that it's asking. Um, I think we, uh, we, all, we, you know, we come, come from a history of sort of like down the downtown, downtown art scene, um, particularly in New York. Um, and so, you know, we're not just looking for projects that are using a fancy new technology because it's available um, or because it's it's nice. Like we're not trying to kind of glorify the tech in any way. So just getting specific about what the relationship is um, to technology so that it's um, it's not just like, oh, Culture Hub does art and tech. Well, I've got something that has some tech in it, you know. So just being able to speak to what what that question or or relationship is i hope that doesn't i hope it's not too daunting because i don't want to say that things shouldn't be something um but yeah we will just want to know what what folks are thinking about Cool, cool. Uh, the LED screen is in Korea. Sorry. It's really cool, really cool space they have there at the Seoul Institute of the Arts. Um, um, yeah, the the residency projects that are on our website, I think you can filter um, the projects by residency, and you should be able to see projects that were, um, and they should say on the page on the page if, and they also have if you click on the locations, um, or it should say where it was presented. Um, if you have any more questions about that. Any other questions? Maybe one other thing about the application is just we do ask um, if there's an ideal time frame for your residency. Um, and if there's not, that's great. That's totally fine. If there is, that's also fine. It's no guarantee. Um, and we won't say, oh, they said that the, that, you know, um, they said that October 15th was gonna would, would be most ideal, but we don't that doesn't work for us, so they're out. Um, if you say most ideal, we will will you know that's just helpful to when we're getting down the road with with sort of trying to slot people in and make sure that the whole group can can get supported. You know, knowing conflicts is important um, so that we can understand if you're only available the first three weeks in September and also getting a sense of like, do you teach full time and would you only be able to come into the studio in the evening? Cause then maybe this isn't the right residency for you at this point. Um, Cause we won't do, 
want to work with folks who can can really take advantage as much as they can you know we understand that people have jobs and like this is you know this isn't the you don't get to quit your job for this sort of a residency um but we do really want to be able to to to, to work and support as much as possible um during the uh during the residency um i got a question about applying for the residency would you encourage up to apply is this okay to say out loud since it was a dm i'm gonna wait i guess okay it is uh if if um i feel a bit unready and thinking of applying for so would you encourage to apply if i feel a bit unready and thinking of applying for the residency next year I feel like the way that this residency is designed is for projects that are specifically ready for a one week in person engagement. Um, so if you don't feel like your project is ready for that, um, then, then maybe do hang back. Um, there's no points against you. We don't keep records from year to year about who's applied and how many times you can apply so it, it would never it wouldn't hurt you um and but i but i do think that you know we are looking um for that practical match of folks who are ready for that one week in the studio and projects that are ready um so if you feel like it would be a good i don't know maybe maybe not if you're if you actively feel unready but um i also think there are other ways to be able to get to know each other um and understand what sort of work you're interested in doing um uh so maybe coming to some events and and getting to know us that way prior would be a good good look um one thing that i i know people like residents have asked too is um is it a seven day week or a five day like work week week kind of week um that can be kind of dependent um based on you know work schedule um you know just like everything that kind of is going on <laughs> in in life so you know we've had events on like a Friday and people come in like Monday to Friday or you know some have started, you know, maybe Sunday evening and then culmination on like the Saturday. So it's just an example of like how some resident artists have kind of worked. And $1,500 stipend given at the time of acceptance or at the start of the residency, we give that on the first day of the residency. Um, so on day one, whenever you start work, that's generally when we give it. But if you, if there's a reason that it should, if you would rather have it in a different way, that's a totally open conversation. Cool. Are there any other questions? Just to speak to scheduling, I think that um, if your application makes it to the round of interviews, that would be uh, that would be one of our sort of main conversation points is to discuss the um, time frame, scheduling, all that good stuff. All right, I think we'll wrap it up and unless someone else we don't answer any other questions anybody else have a burning question or not burning but just wants to ask cool all right well thanks everybody for joining us um really looking forward to, I mean, I'll just say the residency is like a really exciting 
the, the open call is a really exciting opportunity for us to get to know you and your work. Um, so it, it's also a, a very competitive um, program, unfortunately. Um, we have made some of these design, design adjustments to the program in order to um, try to make it more specific so that it's, so that it's um, serving a more specific need within the community. Um, but it also just shows the kind of like breadth of work going on in with artists who are doing the work that you're doing. And, um, and it's a really, really great way to get to know a lot of artists and um, both being resident artists and applying for the open call, I think often will initiate relationships um, that go much beyond this one week residency. Um, so yeah. Thank you for for putting the the time and, and effort and creativity into the applications that I'm sure is has already happened and will happen. Um, how many artists do you pick? We pick about ten artists. Um, the numbers between New York and LA will will vary depending on how many artists apply to each location and and how many um, what sort of balance works best for our organization. Um, generally, we we have a, have a bigger studio, a little bit more um, team members and uh, history here and, and more applications in New York. So we generally have a few more artists in New York than LA. Um, and normally it's been about 10. And when can we expect to hear back? You should expect to hear back in, um, I think the latest would be June. Um, I think we, our goal would be to, we close the application on the 15th, be able to read the applications, um, in a month and have the, the review process go on for about a month and then have interviews conducted from there. Um, but we have a lot of programming going on and we are a small team and, and we have to be, you know, we have to read every application and, and care about every application. So it, it does, um, it can can take a take a little while, but you it'll be no later than June. Um, is it possible to hang a silk for aerial dancers? Um, possible in New York from our grid? Yeah, yes, possible. Um, our grid is about nine feet from the ground, so there's not that much height, um, but it is possible. Yeah, depending on how much you want to move around or how much height you want to get. Um, I'm not sure. I think I feel like that is a New York question from this person. Um, if it's not, then Camille can let you know. Um, how many people generally apply? Um, in past years, we've had around 300 folks apply. Um, we have adjusted the um, since we adjusted it and made it these week long residencies and and stopped and we generally aren't extending the deadline. Um, I think it's been around 200. Um, so that's what it's been in the past. Cool, feels like that was the final question flurry. All right, so I think we will wrap it up and um, yeah, look forward to hearing from you all soon. And we will, you know, just to say it out loud, we have ReFest, our annual festival coming up in April. Um, we'll have physical um, exhibitions, performances, conversations going on in both New York and Los Angeles. It'll all be free. Um, I think I just wanted to invite everybody to that. We'll have more information on it on our website in a couple of weeks. Um, but, you know, it's just great to get to know. These are mostly new names to me. So I'm excited to get to know more people um, and coming out to our events is a great way to do that. And um, we will also have some programming in New York uh, in May uh, related to our experiments and digital storytelling program. So. Um, please come out and introduce yourselves uh, if you're so inclined. 
And I just also encourage everybody to be on our email list because that's where we'll send out any um, updates and, and, and information about our um, open calls and other opportunities. So cool, thanks everybody. I think we'll let everybody disperse and uh, stop recording. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Bye.